It's been over a month since our last video. I've been working hard for over about a month since February. I have just focused on one single subject. It's Arduino Spider Robot. I wanted to build a spider robot for a long time. I'm sure you know that spider robot is not a new thing. If you search for spider robots on YouTube, you will find tons of them. Many of them are carefully designed and work beautifully. Some of them also publish details of their projects. And if you follow their instructions carefully, you can probably make one spider robot easily. But since I'd like to try making it from scratch, I decided to make it all by myself, from the 3D modeling to the programming. For the legs of the spider, I decided to reuse some robot arms I made before. You can find these robot arms in my previous videos. In the beginning, I modified the 3D model of the robot arms and turned it into a spider leg. So I printed four of them to make the prototype. But unfortunately, as you can see, when there is a support underneath, the standing movement of the legs is good. But when I put the robot on a flat surface, it doesn't have enough power to stand. At first, I thought the battery couldn't draw enough current. But even I switched to an external power supply, nothing was improved. Later, I found out two reasons why it cannot stand up properly. First, the design of the servo enclosure is nice and good looking. But when using eight of them as spider legs, it was pretty heavy. Second, the spider legs are too far outward from the center, requiring more power when it performs standing actions. So, I made the second version. And here's what I did to improve it at the second version. I redesigned the 3D models of the spider's legs and body, and modified them to be as lightweight as possible. I relocated the spider's legs more toward the center of the body. In version 1, I used SG90 servos. SG90 uses plastic gears. I think it's somewhat underpowered in version 1. In version 2, I decided to use MG90S instead, which has metal gears and works more powerfully. Fortunately, the dimensions of MG90S are the same as SG90 servos, so no changes were needed for the design. The design is compatible both with SG90 and MG90S, and as you can see, it can stand just fine, and there's still a lot of power there. It may be hard to tell from this alone, but if you place them next to each other and compare them, you can see the difference in size. On the left is version 1, and on the right is version 2, which is lighter after improvement. Also, the new design can hold two batteries instead of an external power supply. I also added a power switch for the servos. Since version 2 looks good and works fine, I thought I'd put a little more work on it. So I got a little carried away and added this cover with four glowing LEDs. After that, I also did some walking programming. I realized that programming it to walk is the most challenging part. On the first try, the walking was awful. Later, with the advice from some friends, I improved the way it walks, and now it can finally walk somehow. However, I'm still not satisfied with this configuration. The glowing LEDs look nice, but they didn't go well with the overall design. I should be able to shape off more weight. 
Okay, let's make version 3. The beauty of having a 3D printer is that you can iterate your improvement very quickly. And this is also the part I enjoyed the most. It's so much fun to see it take shape as fast as I want it to. First, I combined the mount for the Arduino board and the base for the servos into one printed piece. For version 3, the goal is to reduce weight as much as possible. The main body has two batteries, one for the Arduino, the other is for powering the servos. I decided to remove the LED part for this version and replace the legs with the new ones. New legs need fewer screws, which means less weight. And there you have it, the lightest spider robot in my spider robot history. It walks the same way as the previous version. When put on a slippery surface, the robot moves slower than expected because there's not enough friction. But I love it anyway. The process was not all successful. The losses were heartbroken. These are the servos that were executed in trial and error. I am assuming that the momentary high current burned the weakest one among the eight servos. So be careful when you use many servos at the same time. If you don't install the servos correctly, or some servo heat obstacles continuously, the current will rise very high. Now. This is the final version, the one I finally settled on. Here is the good news. I'm going to share the STL files with all the viewers. You can find them on Thinkiverse. There will be a link in the video description. If you like to make your own spider, please give it a shot. If you have a 3D printer, it would be fun to build your own. Program it and make it walk as you like. I have already done the hardware part. I need your help with the programming. Now it's your turn. I challenge you to try. Let me see what you can do with it. I will also share the source code on GitHub. And you can work from there as a start point. If you come up with something cool, please let me know. I'm looking forward to your feedback. If you have any questions, please leave a comment in the comment section. If you like the video, please consider subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to share and like. See you next time.